Okay, everyone. In today's class, you are going to apply the Newton's second law of rotation and calculate how the torque and apply them to the static equilibrium lab, which is the last lab of the semester. So the tools you will need, how to calculate the rotational effect, the torque. If you have a force applied from the axis of rotation, draw this R, the position vector, figure out the angle between these two, the position vector to the force applied. There we go, you can calculate the torque by each applied force in that scenario, okay? And also this goes hand in hand with the net torque equals moment of inertia times the angular acceleration alpha. For today's lab, we are going to talk about the equilibrium. If an object is at equilibrium, remember now we have talked about rotation and translational motion linear motion and the rotation. If something is at equilibrium, these two conditions, no rotation, no linear motion, no translational motion, these both should be satisfied. Right here, the first condition, if there's no any linear motion, there should not be any acceleration. That means the net force acting on the object should be zero. We talked about the two dimension, along the X direction, along the Y direction, each should be satisfied. There's no any net force along the X direction, no any net force along the Y direction. That means the total net force equals to zero. There is no any acceleration. First condition satisfied. The condition number two, there should not be any rotation, that means the net torque should be zero. There's no any rotational effect by any of the forces. If the net torque equal to zero, alpha in the right-hand side, net torque equals I times alpha. Alpha is going to be zero. Whenever you are solving any problem that involves the rotation or the equilibrium, these three, net force along X, net force along Y, net torque around the axis of rotation. This gives us three equations to solve any problem. Okay, so I am going to show you guys for the static equilibrium based on the lab you are doing to calculate the net torque that the torque can be calculated around any point if the object is at equilibrium. Similar to this situation, you will talk about balancing objects, what forces you need to figure out in the lab activity you are doing. All what we know, if the net torque right here, this guy, this is how we use the tool, what we need to calculate, figure out what are the forces acting on in this system. If one force by the hand of this lady, if two force by the hands of this man and the force of gravity acting on this baby, the boy. There we go. We have two situations we could consider based on what? If the net torque of an object is zero, it doesn't matter which point you consider the axis of rotation. One could say, first I'm going to pick this left hand side right here. That is my axis of rotation. Totally fine. Someone were to say, I am going to pick right here. That is my axis of rotation. Totally fine with me. The reason this boy is at equilibrium, no rotation, no moving up and down. John. So let me show you two scenarios, axis of rotation you could consider here or the right hand side. Let's go right here, left hand side. In this case, is the object at static equilibrium? No rotation, no translational motion. The boy is not moving, not rotating, gun condition satisfied. Now you can go consider right here, calculate the net torque around the axis of rotation right here. Whenever you do that, this one, let's go clockwise, counterclockwise. I am showing you both situations. When you do that, clockwise direction, 
everything. The force is trying to rotate anything around this axis of rotation clockwise. They are considered positive clockwise direction when I'm considering that. First consider the F1 force. This is the formula you are going to use. The force is going to be F1 from the axis of rotation, how far away? That is the R. When the force is at the axis of rotation, R distance is going to be zero. So there's no any contribution by the force F1 for the rotation for this formula. First one done. Let's consider the next force we have, Mg. Around the axis of rotation, the Mg force is pulling it down, trying to rotate in the positive direction, the clockwise direction we consider right now. We have the distance from the axis of rotation to here, 3L divided by four, the force is Mg. What is the angle? Right here, it is in the direction clockwise, the positive direction we consider right here, the substitution force is mg the distance is from here to here that is 3l divided by 4 sine angle angle in the direction positive you consider that's not if two force is remaining from the axis of rotation draw the position vector r right here measure the angle that is going in the opposite direction we consider Clockwise rotations are positive, but this guy is doing counterclockwise. That's why negative. Do the force distance sine angle. From the axis of rotation, it is distance L away, the total distance. F2 times L sine negative 90, you do that. No rotation, no translation, equilibrium, net torque equals to zero. This is exact same as what you are going to do for the lab activity. Let's consider, this is one way to do that. If someone need, you can pick counterclockwise should be positive. Around the axis of rotation, if something is rotating around the counterclockwise direction, you consider it is going to be positive. There we go, net toe, counterclockwise direction positive. Let's consider this guy, F2 force. Yes, it is writing right here around this point it is trying to rotate in the positive direction counterclockwise direction that's why the angle is 90 degrees from the axis of rotation it is distance total length l away now it becomes a positive this one right here the remaining force mg now it is going down that's why negative 90 opposite to the counterclockwise that's why sine negative 90 distance force mg, you will see right here is the same equation. All you have, if you bring this whole thing to the right hand side, this will be a negative, this will be a positive. That's what, what you have here. So it doesn't matter you pick clockwise or counterclockwise as the positive. When you are trying to calculate the net torque, this is the equation everyone. You can do the same thing. You change the axis of rotation around the same objects. You have same forces. You can pick, this is my axis of rotation now. You do the same thing, clockwise or counterclockwise, net torque right here. From the axis of rotation, F2 is distance zero away, no contribution from the F2 now. Now you draw the position vector for the F1. It is in the same clockwise direction. That's why distance L away, force is F1, sine angle positive 90. Do the same thing, position vector for this guy, but now it is going this way, around this point. This guy is trying to go the counterclockwise. That's why negative mg. Now the distance from here to here, that is distance L divided by four away, you do this equation that's equal to zero, net torque equals to zero. If you do counterclockwise, this guy becomes positive, the effect by this one becomes negative, you have the same equation, positive negative signs switch. So the same thing you all do for the lab activity today, pick an axis of rotation around that, consider the rotational effect by each force if it is at equilibrium, static equilibrium, net torque equals to zero. How to calculate the torque by this formula and add all the effects you have the net torque, everyone. Okay.
So that will be it for today's lab. And here we go.